Okay, now our closer. Hello, hello. Scott Roofield. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, it's the end of the night, and wow, I cannot believe how many people are here. And, and so I'm going to end with a story. Uh, and I'm going to talk about the process of replacing something that sucks at a megacorp. I'm working at my third megacorp. I was at Am I'm at Amazon. I was at Microsoft. I was at Los Alamos. They don't get any bigger. So I think we're really bad at a lot of things at Amazon. But if you're coming to Amazon and try to find something, we're good at some stuff. Like you can kind of search and it sort of works and you can find a gift. But finding a deal is really hard. And so I took on the challenge of, of building a team that tried to help people find deals. But then finding that at Amazon is just as challenging as finding it anywhere else. Building a brand is no easier. You're just fighting with the same, you're fighting with people who are closer to you, who are trying to take your space. But then I've got this thing, this gold box, and this sucks. This is a terrible customer experience. Let's look at some of the reasons. You've got three buttons. You've got five prices. You've got a page where the ad just totally reflowed the rest of the site. How many websites do you go to that totally reflow based on the size of the ad? You've got this experience that for years has been festering at Amazon terrible for customers to use, so we built something new. I'm not going to try to sell you on the site, give your money to Darfur, spend your money crap somewhere else. Um, the important point was we redesigned the entire experience around helping people find great deals. We thought this was a good idea, and so we, put, we gave people the chance to comment. And what did we want them to talk about? We wanted them to help each other. Finding deals is hard, there's lots of different sites to do it, you don't know whether this product is a good product, this is what we wanted them to do. This is not what they did. And so we hit day one, and you probably can't read very much of this from there, but they don't know what's going on. They have no idea about this new format. And the first time we get insulted, they call me, really, a vapid humanoid who was paid to come up with this idea. <laughs> day two comes along, and they get we're not kidding. And so they don't have anything new to say. They just want to tell us that they don't like it. And so I come in. I'm Scott, a member of the Gold Box team. And suddenly, we start engaging them. This this doesn't make them any happier. They just have a name to pick. <laughs> and then we sell cookies. And we sell 6,000 boxes of cookies in five hours with 250 cookies each. And instead, they just call us a monkey. And our internal colleagues say that we're idiots, too. And so then we sell a ball chair. And Lauren asks us about a ball warmer, which is really classy. <laughs> But then there's a conversation that's starting. And you're discovering that these people who've never heard of each other are suddenly friends and like each other. And they write poetry. And when you visit the slides later, you should read these poems. These are, this one on the left, this is a really well-written poem. I've never inspired poetry along anyone. So my team gets involved and they're like, all right, we know that there's something these customers want. So thanks for the week they tell us. Thanks for listening, but you still suck. P.S. Booty is good. What's booty, you're asking? Fight Pirates Booty. Booty Day. We give them a new experience. We get a new poem. They say hooray. These groups of customers who've never met each other before are suddenly thanking us for giving them something on the website that they were never involved with. And so now what do they do? Well, now it's like any other common thread, right? They're talking about American history when we give them a wireless cell phone. They're debating Jesus when we're talking about gloves. Oh, and by the way, we've, we're wildly profitable. Like, we've built this incredibly, incredibly effective merchandising device. So what do we learn from this? The first is, no matter what you think you're replacing, it's got a fan base somewhere. No matter how crappy it is, you can let this stop you. You can use this as a way to block your inertia, but you've got to keep trying. You've got to keep trying to build things. This is the best example that I've been part of of an unintentional community. These people have nothing in common except that they visited a broken website. And now, and now they're friends, and they talk to each other. And so I had to jump in, and I had to find a way to engage, because I knew that this was going to go off the rails. I have to be corporate. I work for a megacorp, but I couldn't, it couldn't sound like a PR guy, because these folks wanted to hear it. So I had to pretend to be friendly, and I had to pretend to care as I went through these conversations. Okay, I did care, and the real reason I cared was because I knew that if we engaged with these folks positively, we'd actually get fans. People would be supportive of me who they don't know.
And sometimes, sometimes we fail and we still make bad choices. And nobody really needed three dozen boxes of nerds. And I figure a good ending to the night is I've got a whole bunch left over. So pick them up. <laughs> <laughs>